On the 20 slides shown below, I present the original photographs of the Second World War from the German archive, which are in my collection. These photos are from my collection department, Wehrmacht on the Eastern and Western Fronts. If you like it, subscribe to my YouTube, like it, so you don't miss the new weekly presentations. If you would like to order 5 inches by 7 inches copies of these photos from the original, you can specify which photos you would like to receive. Laboratory quality. Enjoy your viewing. The BT tanks. Fast moving tank or high speed tank, were a series of Soviet light tanks produced in large numbers between 1932 and 1941. They were lightly armored, but reasonably well armed for their time, and had the best mobility of all contemporary tanks. The BT tanks were known by the nickname Betka from the acronym, or its diminutive Betushka. The successor of the BT tanks was the famous T-34 medium tank, introduced in 1940, which would replace all of the Soviet fast tanks, infantry tanks, and medium tanks in service. BT-5, larger cylindrical turret, 45mm 20K gun, coaxial DT machine gun. Earlier tanks used simpler fully cylindrical bolted turrets with rear bustle welded on. The BA-10 was an armored car developed in the Soviet Union in 1938 and produced through 1941. It was the most produced Soviet pre-1941 heavy armored car, 3,311 were built in three versions. These versions were the BA-10, the BA-10M, improved version with new radio, and the BA-10ZHD, equipped for dual railway slash road use, the basic BA-10 design was developed from the BA-3 and BA-6 heavy armored cars. It had an improved gas AAA chassis and improved armor, up to 15 mm at front and turret. It was intended that the BA-10 would be replaced in 1941 by the BA-11 with diesel engine and more sophisticated armor design, but the outbreak of war prevented BA-11 production. The BA-10 was in Red Army service until 1945. Significant numbers of captured BA-10s were used by Finland, at least 24, Germany and other Axis powers in Europe. The T-34 was the mainstay of the Soviet Red Army armored forces throughout the war. Its general specifications remained nearly unchanged until early 1944, when it received a firepower upgrade with the introduction of the greatly improved T-3485 variant. Its production method was continuously refined and rationalized to meet the needs of the Eastern Front, making the T-34 quicker and cheaper to produce. The Soviets ultimately built over 80,000 T-34s of all variants, allowing steadily greater numbers to be fielded despite the loss of tens of thousands in combat against the German Wehrmacht. Replacing many light and medium tanks in Red Army service, it was the most produced tank of the war, as well as the second most produced tank of all time. The North American NA-64, NA-64P2 or NA-64P2 in French service, Yale in Canadian service, is a low-wing single-piston engine monoplane advanced trainer aircraft that was built for the French Air Force and French Navy, served with the Royal Canadian Air Force, and with the Luftwaffe as a captured aircraft during World War II. The NA-64s captured from the French were used by the German Luftwaffe for all types of flight training from basic flying to advanced fighter tactics. Dive bomber schools and target tug units and even combat squadrons all used the NAR-64, as they were designated by the Luftwaffe, from the tail markings of the French examples. 
At least one was used by the Zirkus Rosarius to familiarize German aircrew with the handling of American aircraft before they evaluated captured aircraft. The PPSH 41TR. Pistolet Pulmyosh Pagina 41, lit. Shpagin's Machine Pistol 41, is a Soviet submachine gun designed by Georgi Shpagin as a cheaper and simplified alternative to the PPD 40. A common Russian nickname for the weapon is Papasha, meaning daddy, and it was sometimes called the burp gun because of its high fire rate. The PPSH is a magazine fed selective fire submachine gun using an open bolt, blowback action. Made largely of stamped steel, it can be loaded with either a box or drum magazine and fires the 7.62 x 25 mm Tokarov pistol round. The PPSH saw extensive combat use during World War II. The T-37A was a Soviet amphibious light tank. The tank is often referred to as the T-37, although that designation was used by a different tank which never left the prototype stage. The T-37A was the first series of mass-produced fully amphibious tanks in the world. The tank was first created in 1932, based on the British Vickers tankette and other operational amphibious tanks. The tank was mass-produced starting in 1933 up until 1936, when it was replaced with the more modern T-38, based on the T-37A. Overall, after four years of production, 2,552 T-37As were produced, including the original prototypes. In the Red Army, they were used to perform tasks in communication, reconnaissance, and as defense units on the march as well as active infantry support on the battlefield. The T-37A was used in large numbers during the Soviet invasion of Poland and in the Winter War against Finland. T-37As were also used by the Soviets in the beginning of the Great Patriotic War, but most of them were quickly lost. Surviving tanks fought on the front lines until 1944, and were used in training and auxiliary defense until the end of World War II. The T-70 was a light tank used by the Red Army during World War II, replacing both the T-60 scout tank for reconnaissance and the T-50 light infantry tank for infantry support. The T-80 light tank was a more advanced version of the T-70 with a two-man turret, it was produced only in very small numbers when light tank production was abandoned. The T-90 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun was a prototype vehicle with twin machine guns, based on the T-70 chassis. The T-70 was armed with a 45mm length slash 46 gun model 38 with 45 rounds carried, and a coaxial 7.62mm DT machine gun. The tank was operated by a driver and a commander who loaded and fired the gun. Armor thickness on the turret front was 60mm, turret sides and rear, 35mm, hull front and sides, 45 mm, roof and bottom, 10 mm T-70s were put into production in March 1942 at Zavod number 37, and along with T-60 production at Gaz and Zavod number 38. They completely replaced T-60 production in September 1942, although that tank remained in use until the end of the war. Production ended in October 1943, with 8,226 vehicles completed. The Clement Voroshilov, KV, 
Tanks are a series of Soviet heavy tanks named after the Soviet defense commissar and politician Clement Voroshilov who operated with the Red Army during World War II. The KV tanks were known for their heavy armor protection during the early stages of the war, especially during the first year of the German invasion of the Soviet Union. In certain situations, even a single KV-1 or KV-2 supported by infantry could halt German formations. The German Wehrmacht at that time rarely deployed its tanks against KVs, as their own armament was too poor to deal with the Russische Koloss, Russian Colossus. 7. The KV tanks were practically immune to the 3.7 cm KWK-36 and howitzer-like, short-barreled 7.5 cm KWK-37 guns mounted, respectively, on the early Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks fielded by the invading German forces. Until the Germans developed more effective guns, the KV-1 was invulnerable to almost any German weapon except the 8.8 cm flak gun. The T-34 was the mainstay of the Soviet Red Army armored forces throughout the war. Its general specifications remained nearly unchanged until early 1944, when it received a firepower upgrade with the introduction of the greatly improved T-3485 variant. Its production method was continuously refined and rationalized to meet the needs of the Eastern Front, making the T-34 quicker and cheaper to produce. The Soviets ultimately built over 80,000 T-34s of all variants, allowing steadily greater numbers to be fielded despite the loss of tens of thousands in combat against the German. The T-20 was designed in 1936 at the Orjorniki Idza Moscow plant No. 37. They were manufactured during 1937 to 1941 at Factory No. 37, as well as at STZ and Gaz. The tractor was designed to tow light artillery pieces such as the 45mm anti-tank gun and the 120mm heavy mortar. The tractor could tow the weapons themselves plus a small quantity of ammunition, usually towed in a limber, along with up to six crewmen. Occasionally, two limbers were towed to increase the ammunition supply. The forward compartment provided space for the driver and vehicle commander. It was fully armored and had a ball-mounted DT machine gun. The rear compartment held the gun crews, seated back-to-back -back in outward-facing bench seats. A canvas top could be erected for protection in poor weather. Approximately 4,401 T-20 tractors were built between 1937 and 1941. Although the Komsomolets T-20 armored tractor was designed as a prime mover, some vehicles were used in combat during 1941. The tractor was employed as a tankette. The T-20 tractor was used by the Red Army during the Winter War and during World War II. During Operation Barbarossa, some T-20 tractors were used as armored fighting vehicles, though after 1941 they were used only as artillery tractors. Both Finland and Nazi Germany used captured vehicles. Prior to the start of Operation Barbarossa in June 1941, about 500 of the over 22,000 tanks then in Soviet service were of the KV-1 type. As the war progressed, it became evident that there was little sense in producing the expensive KV tanks, as the T-34 medium tank performed better, or at least equally well, in all practical respects. In fact the only advantage the KV had over the T-3476 was its larger and roomier three-man turret. Later in the war, the KV series became a base for the development of the IS tank, Iosif Stalin, series of tanks and self-propelled guns.